Don't miss the fallout from Double or Nothing. I'm going to hurt you. Oh! AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined by Taz, Caprice Coleman, and the third member, the fourth member, excuse me, of our podcast team, Bobby Cruz, for this match. This match is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring, we're going to Brass City CT. She is the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, Mercedes Martinez. Caprice, it's been a big week for Mercedes Martinez picking up a win last night on AEW Dark Elevation over a very tough Maserati. I believe she's more than proven herself to be a worthy champion of Ring of Honor, beating Deanna Perazio to unify the titles. And she's had defense after defense, been undefeated ever since, and she's going to try to do the same tonight. And her opponent, Viva Van. Taz, Viva Van with an opportunity to make a huge statement here tonight if she's able to score a victory over the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Absolutely, but, you know, it's going to be tough going. You're dealing with someone like Mercedes, who's a veteran of many ring wars throughout the world. Nice mat return right there in a the front headlock by Martinez. I like to see these young people come inside the ring. Three and a half years experience. She's recently just graduated from Cali State Fullerton. Has, she has a marketing degree and already has opened up her own cosmetics line called Hellbent Vixen. Viva Van could add another accolade to her resume, but Mercedes Martinez, nice drop toe hold there. And Mercedes, as you mentioned, Taz, a lot of experience. Caprice, I believe, in your pro wrestling career, you've shared a locker room with Mercedes on more than one occasion. Absolutely, and she's always been that person that's always about her business. She's always worked before she became full-time at professional wrestling, and when she became professional wrestling, she threw everything else away and focused only on this, and she's been great at it. Well, as you guys know, this is a tough career to do half-assed, right? So to Martinez's credit and to your point, Caprice, that's why she is as successful as she is. Nice double underhooks, that butterfly suplex. She didn't go into a full arch. She kind of turned a little bit, but that running knee strike was on point, Excalibur. Yeah, Mercedes ran through. Viva Van with that big running knee strike. And the advantage she's going to have with this, she has 21 years experience going on. You're speaking of, of Martinez. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And to, to have that much experience, 15 titles, 21 years, she's more than proven herself. And it's almost like about time the world is getting ready to see her. Right now, that's a good point. Viva Van, though, Ooh. kicks to the outside of the knee, and then the, oh, that Ooh. one landed. Wow, that one landed for Yeah, the sure. top of the head, man. That can definitely knock the loopy. Van better not scream and yell. She better do something else offensively with someone like Martinez. Whoa! Speaking of screaming and yelling, she's also a leader of a heavy metal band. That's why she's screaming and yelling. There you go. <laughs> what Mercedes wow. Martinez. Screaming and yelling when she comes in the corner with the high boom. Ooh. And then the leaping wow. single foot drop kick. Kicking that jaw. She changed the chords on that line. And now Martinez, you can see in her eyes, she's locked and loaded. Ready to put out Viva Van, I think. Mercedes hangs Viva Van. Oh, not hangs her up. Instead, just slingshots her. Well, it's a good way to break a rib right there. When you land, these ropes are super tight. There's steel cable underneath that rubber hole. Oh, execution oh. forearm! Oh, oh, Mercedes landed the shot and now looking maybe for the Romero special. No, that's the Brass City sleeper! That's gonna do it! That is it. Mercedes Martinez scores the submission victory. The winner of this match by submission, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, Mercedes Martinez. Wow, making short work of her opponent. This is a champion that wants to be dominant for a long time. Mercedes Martinez keeps racking up win after win. Oh, you and see right here, Martinez locks it in. Grand City Sleeper. Tell you what, that's off the hometown of Waterbury, Connecticut, where she's from. And Mercedes Martinez, a big victory here tonight to kick us off for AEW Dark. All Elite Wrestling. All Elite Wrestling. All are welcome. Doesn't matter who you are or who you love. All. 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 All, those, all. all sexual orientations. Different colors, different shapes, sizes. You have a place here at All Elite Wrestling. All. 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 all, all. Are welcome here. The 
Butcher and the Blade with the Bunny in their corner in tag team action coming up next. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the Bunny from Buffalo, New York. At a combined weight of 501 pounds, The Butcher and The Blade. The Butcher and The Blade, two of the toughest men we have here in AEW set to compete. And then, oh yeah, of course, you've got The Bunny, Taz. Well, The Bunny, uh, she's just as unpredictable and whacked out and crazy as Butcher played. I love these guys for sure. They don't play games. And the Butcher with a little extra fringe on his jacket. Yeah. And their opponents, Hunter Gray and Paul Titan. Yeah, no, well, they, yeah, Butcher and Blade have some, uh, some big, big competition here. Physically big, I should say. Yeah, we're getting our first look at Hunter Gray and Paul Titan here on AEW Dark with Caprice. They're going to. Gonna, I mean, this is going to be a very physical matchup. I can just tell by looking at the competitors. Absolutely. Everybody inside the ring, well over 220 pounds. The great experience going to Butcher and the Blade. But you see the handprint on Hunter Gray's face? Like, that's his face paint. Like, it's the handprint. The war paint. So that makes him, like, that makes him mean and tough because he's got a hand. What's he going on there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. That's what I'm trying to figure out myself. I'm on the same page. Well, Butcher and the Blade from... Buffalo, New York, and AEW will be making our return to Western New York. Oh, yeah. Later this summer, we'll be at Rochester's Blue Cross Arena on Wednesday, July 6th. Tickets on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Couple big hosses right here. I don't know if my man wants to deal with Big Butch, though. Butch will knock him off his feet. Oh! I told you. <laughs> Wow, I'm telling you, he's rethinking things now. And looking at that hand on his face is not his hand. It's like somebody else's hand on his face. So maybe it's some type of anointing or something from somebody that he feels. Well, he just got his ass knocked on the ground. So. He, he got anointed with that lariat from the butcher. Well, you know, sometimes you have to go through a lot of stuff to call on the father. I guess so, man. <laughs> he got lit up, dude. The and now you're dealing with the blade. That yeah, guy. we're seeing a lot of aggression out of the blade here. And the blade. The, from the mercenaries oh, of the oh, good knee there. Andrade family office, but yeah, that knee, that point of the knee. Oh, oh, interesting tag. Let me drill my partner. I, I wonder if this was a video game, like how much he just knocked off of his partner. Oh, like the life, that's how it works. Yeah, the like he's stealing the yeah. yellow. <laughs> but, but this, man, Hunter Gray and Paul Titan. Uh-oh. Oh, a double team type maneuver here. Ooh. Nice. A body slam of his own a, partner. He's got like a couple of big ass barbarians out here. It's going wild. This guy. Oh, the high boot in the corner on the blade. You don't see blade hurting much. Yeah, this is uh, this is rare territory for Butcher and the Blade to be in. Blade has his hands full. He's gonna have to duck and move, keep moving away. He's gonna have to change his game plan because power versus power is not gonna work here. Wow, nice chop. But a good quickness and striking and hand speed by the veteran himself in the blade. And I'm sure in a few seconds he's gonna tag in Big Butcher. I can feel it's gonna happen shortly. Blade duck back with that big right hand and then landed that short arm lariat. The bunny's so proud. She's so proud of Butcher and Blade. Butcher and Blade. Is that, oh, wow, double shoulder block. Takes Titan off his feet. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Titan. Right Oof, just double chops. Well, actually, quadruple cover, chops cover, there. Cover, cover, cover. Oh, uh, good athleticism by the big man right there to yeah. break up that pink cover. Hunter Gray doing his, uh, his partner a favor. And now Gray inside the ring with the Butcher. Which has been in that corner for a long time, though. He may be playing mouse. No, he's not. I'm surprised Butcher wasn't able to get out of the way because my man called his shot. Butcher had to stay there and eat it. Taz, famously, you despise when people call their shots. I do. I don't believe in it. You're in a fight. You don't tell people what you're going to do with that. You're fighting. Well, they, I, think, I think Butcher allowed, uh, or excuse me, Hunter Gray wasted a little oh. too much time in the blade. The rising knee strike right oh. under the knee. Oh. Oh. Titan there to break it up, and 
Butch. Set. Whoa! Ah, oh, he almost blew out the audio system. That's how hard he landed. Uh oh, Butcher in the play. Oh, nice combination. We're gonna drag the leg. One, two, three. That's it. Wow. Gary Owen is the Butcher and the Blade. Good, impressive, strong victory by Butcher and Blade with the lovely bunny right there with him. I tell you what, but Gray and Titan, man, for a debut, they did a great job. But the Butcher and the Blade just dominant here. I mean, Gray and Titan had some moments, but here we see Taz. Yeah, no, exactly. You're not going to deal, you're not going to be able to beat the chemistry that these two men have and the way they flow. It's just not going to happen with Butcher and Blade. They're just too damn good. And it shows by the victory, an emphatic victory. And especially when they are on the payroll of Andrade El Idolo, the Andrade family office. Congratulations for the win, Butcher and Blade. Medalist Anthony Agogo of the Factory will go one on one with Carly Bravo next. This next contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, Governor Anthony. Go-Go! Well, Go-Go's ready. Go-Go's ready to fight, ready to knock somebody out. That's how he does it, baby. Proud, Love the Go-Go. Proud member of the factory, Anthony Go-Go, is taking the pro wrestling like a fish to water. But you have to remember, Taz, to your point, he is a 2012 Olympic bronze medalist. Well, he's a walking weapon, Excalibur. I mean, the man is a hybrid with this legitimate, amazing, a pedigree as a boxer, along with what he's doing as a young pro wrestler. He's a hybrid, dangerous machine. Heavyweight power, middleweight speed. And his opponent, Carly Bravo. But Caprice, this is a man that Agogo knows quite well because Agogo is trained with Carly Bravo at the factory. These guys hated each other at the factory, and Carly wants a, a chance to prove that he can beat this guy. Sometimes you're at a training school, somebody gets somewhere before you, and you want to prove that you're better than them. This is the stage she wants to prove it on. Taz, can you imagine somebody hating Carly Bravo? <laughs> yes, immensely. And I think with this side headlock right here that Agogo has, that side headlock takedown, if he could just keep Keep, uh, you know, keep Bravo down on the mat, grind him down, he'll capture the victory. I think people hate Carly Bravo because he's loud and he's arrogant and he's tough as Arnold, but other people could be loud, arrogant, tough, and Arnold, and they're the greatest thing ever. I think it's how you pick your sides. He's not a likable guy. Um, he could literally hand out $1,000 bills to people at a poor, and people will hate Carly Bravo. I promise. I'm just well, telling you. I would like to find that out. I would need a thousand dollars. I don't even know if they make thousand dollar bills. I don't even know if that's even a thing. To I want to try that. Dude, test me. I test the water. I feel you. I hear you, man. Well, for the first time ever, <laughs> AEW Dynamite will be making our debut in California tomorrow night in Los Angeles at the fabulous Kia Forum, and then also in June we'll be making another debut in Detroit, Michigan on Wednesday, June 29th at the Little Caesars Arena. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Well, go go there with a snap, man, running for something, a nice, strong shoulder block. A go go has the size advantage. And man, when you're talking junk and winning at the same time, that just does something to your opponent. It just makes them feel that much smaller. Sure thing, he's a dangerous man, is a go go. Now you see uh, Bravo with that side headlock. Shucks him off, ducks the line. Swing Whoa! And a nice. miss by a go go. Bravo, drop kick on point, backs the governor up into the corner. Bravo. Nice. That's one thing about Bravo, man. He's not going to stop. Former Marine, he's fought for our country in Afghanistan and Iraq. He's not going to quit until it's over. Bravo up to his feet, gives the salute. Yeah! And they missed that. I think you missed it. Looked like you missed it. Well, yeah, and a go go. Kicking out. Kicking out before one. 
And that's the that's the opportunity missed, if you ask me, because this guy's on a 12-match winning streak. You got to hit him when you can. Yeah, Gogo has been racking up the victories. And a headbutt to the midsection. Yeah, good job by a Gogo. -Go. Take the wind out of your opponent. Get hit in the midsection in the core like that. Knocks the wind out of you. It's tough to recover. That disrupts the breathing. And then the body slam, Taz, sure. also affecting the, your wind. It brings it all the way back around full circle of your core and your body. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see right now that necklace that Bravo was wearing is gone now. The show is over. And he's continually to not relent, throwing that body slam, taking the breath out of him every time he does it. And anyone who's received multiple body slams, which I'm sure a lot of our audience haven't, but I have, it sucks, it hurts. On. And he's zoning in at Excalibur on the midsection. Is a go-go. Yeah, go-go. That arm of Bravo captured behind Bravo's back, and then those elbow strikes to the midsection, the uppercut. Now Bravo uh -oh, uh -oh. comes. Oh, oh, my God! Wow. The he caught him midair! Big, big right hand by a go-go. Well, we've seen this multiple times, Excalibur. I think that Bravo is out, knocked out. He's not moving. Look at him, his body, how tightened up it is. Yeah, we've asked the question, why wait for the knockout when you could just pin him in three? Anthony Agogo answered it, because I can. I love it. It sends a direct message to the locker room, to the male roster in AW. It sends the message, I will knock you out. Anthony Agogo. I'll hurt you with a punch to the face, body shots, whatever it may be. Wow. Heavyweight power, middleweight speed, a right hand that will make your face bleed. Anthony Agogo picking up yet another win. Hater's gonna hate, and Jamie Hater's gonna break backs next here on AEW Dark. Today. All right. Well, Scott, I might be back today. I should wrestle in the UK. I go to the clubs, you know, and I start dancing. I drink a whole bunch. I get bombed. I dance and stuff. And my feet are moving now. It's like I can't help it. I'm That's what I'm saying. It's the techno. It does to you. When we were in Vegas last week, and yeah. you somehow missed every single billboard <laughs> advertising a DJ set at a, at a casino. <laughs> Well, you're shaking the table, man. <laughs> I was going to keep going. I was right. it's, it's contagious. I'm telling you. Colin Elbow tie-up, center of the ring, Jamie Hayter, one of the most powerful competitors here in the women's division of AEW, pound for pound, maybe one of the most powerful competitors in all of but, AEW. Uh, underratedly powerful, to your point, is Hayter. She's strong. She's got a very, very mean streak, hence why her alliance watching the back of the good doctor, Dr. Britt Baker, very smart by Britt Baker. The thing I like about Danica De La Rose is, you know, she wrestled in high school. Now, when I wrestled in high school, there really weren't any females on the team. So to be a female wrestler in high school, you had to go through some stuff. And I heard she was really good, and she's trained by Rakishi and the late Buddy Wayne. Buddy Wayne. So to get her opportunity here, I want to see what she has. Right now, Jamie Hayter, though, the snap suplex and raining down right elbow strikes. Yeah, and you see right now, this is the problem. I understand she's trained by incredible people for sure, and I and I respect that in her amateur background, but she got to keep bringing that kind of fight with someone like Hater. We saw Hater almost leaned into that last uh -oh, elbow, but uh -oh. right uh -oh. now, oh my back, God! Backbreaker from Jamie Hater. Yeah, spine first on the knee, and Hater's not done. Oh, oh. rip cord lariat! That might be it. You can count to 50. Wow, that was short. Jamie Hader. Jamie Hader making short work of her opponent. Didn't even get a chance well, to talk about how we're going to be in Savannah, in, in Atlanta, coming up in July. She uh, a hater, that's why. Well, they, they, listen, you know how it is, right? You don't get paid by the hour. You got to get the Ws. She got the Ws. She got the win. You see right here, rip court line. Boom! That's it. All over but the shout. Jamie Hader is the winner. Jamie Hader, emphatic victory here tonight on AEW Dark. Man, that was a shotgun blast.
coming up here tonight in our main event, the Wingman, Ryan Nemeth and Pretty Peter Avalon with Serpentico will take on Dark Order's Evil Uno, John Silver, and number 10, Preston Vance. For one fall with a 20 minute time limit. He introduced first the team of Serpentico, Pretty, Peter Avalon, and the Hollywood Hop, Ryan Nemeth. Taz, this is huge. Serpentico, a guest wingman. I I'm very impressed. I mean, look at the looks of Serpentico. He's a great looking guy. Serpentico is just like Avalon is, and, uh, and as uh, Ryan Nemeth. I mean, uh, these guys are good looking guys. You're another man who's very handsome with a mess. One might call them punks. Excuse me? Punks. 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 Hugs. Punks. 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 Thugs. Oh, all right. Punks. Okay. Hunk the hunk of burning love. Join the Remix Jones. <laughs> and their opponents, the team of Evil Uno, John Silver, and Dark Order number Ah, what an ovation here for the Dark Order. Dark Order, John Silver, Big Preston Vance, Evil Uno. They have had their share of issues with the Wingmen over the past few, I guess, months, really. And it's all coming ahead here tonight in our main event. Oh, you are correct. Excalibur, the issue, issues, I should say, between the Wingmen and the Dark Order has been epic. It has been going on for quite some time. Will it get resolved? Will that happen tonight? And Will I, I rip your mask off? I'm oh, sorry, that was the internal voice. I apologize. <laughs> he said, yeah, he said the quiet part loud. <laughs> Can't help it. The battle of the Wingmen and the Wingmen of Jace versus the Dark Order here tonight. Referee Mike Posey drawing the assignment for this matchup. Mike Posey, that's a guy you just can't trust. Care to expand upon that? Well, I'll tell you later, buddy. You don't even want to know. It just never ends with him. But here we go. Avalon and Silver. Does he uh, have anything to do with rings? Uh, kind of. And birds. Oh. Here we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> Caught him <up> time, Avalon. <laughs> Snatches the side headlock. John Silver. Backs Avalon into the rope. Shoulders! Oh. Tackle! Johnny Hungry. By the meat man. Tell you what, he didn't need, he didn't have the uh, momentum. Avalon did, but shows the power, the low stature of Silver. John Silver, who uh, six days ago in Las Vegas, Nevada, met recording artist Coolio. Yeah, the casino, I heard about that. I wasn't really impressed. Oof. <laughs> Guy's older than me, Coolio. Is he really? Fantastic voyage. Remember he did that? Yeah. yeah. Now look at this. Look, look at Serpentico. He's all jacked up. He says he's going to press Vance and Silver. Come on there, Serpentico. Oh, wait, no. He's going to try for a double shoulder tackle, I Initially, think. Initially, he said press. He did the well, yeah, he did the press move. But that did not work. Okay. Serpentico thinking about it. Oh! Shot in the chest by John Silver. Oh, watch out for Uno. Oh! Uno shoulder tackle as well. Dark Order asserting their dominance here. Our main event matchup. Now you got just the massive and powerful Preston Vance, 10, dealing with Serpentico. Look at this delayed vertical suplex. 10 could hold him up forever here, dude. Yeah. Preston Vance. The 10 count on the delayed vertical suplex. And now wow. Evil Uno desperately wants a tag. Oh, well, a live audience here in Las Vegas. They wanted Uno in this thing. Uno, maybe thinking vertical suplex as well. Oh, oh. just for one count, though. Uno! He, Uno! Yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little slow. Chair shots. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, oh brother. Geez, a stomp on the fingers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, never heard anyone. No. Now you see again a guy like Uno. He's a heavy hitter. I mean, deceivingly a heavy hitter. Oh, but nice reversal there by Serpentico. Avalon with the assist. Oh, good job. Leaping flatliner there by Serpentico. 
The Panther will actually get him on a Super Bowl. Celebrating here. Now look at this right hand to the head of Evil Uno. Uno makes the tag out to Pretty Peter Avalon. And uh, Taz, I know you got to be happy with the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth, the legal man in the ring. Means your bag is not being rifled through backstage. That's well documented what he does. <laughs> and look at this hit. Oh. The wingman. Double drop kick right there on Uno. Uno covered. Nice cover there by the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth, but Uno still able to break free. Ooh. A punch right to the ear, even though the man is wearing a mask. You know it's got a welt up the ear or a cauliflower your ear with a punch to it like that. Shoulder to the midsection of Uno. Nemeth dragging Uno over the corner. And now Serpentico tagged back in the wingman. Holding Uno up, just an elbow to the kidneys of Evil Uno. I want to point out we have an awesome audience. Our live crowd here in Las Vegas is phenomenal for this episode of Dark. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Serpentico, the, the headbutt. Shades of uh, slight shades of Maki Ito, my friend the, from uh, Japan. With yes. the Kokeshi. Yeah, yeah, excuse me, Kokeshi. Kokeshi. Otherwise known as Headbutt Jones. Maki Ito? Is it? No, the Headbutt. Oh, I see. Mike Posey. Oh, watch out. Mike Posey tried to steal Serpentico's boot. Told you. We saw it right I, there before I our eyes. Knew it. He was sketchy. He, he was unlacing it. Yes. Boots are worth a lot of money. And now the wingman stopping Uno, but Uno's trying to get the Vince. Oh, Uno breaks the grip. Double stunner. There we go. Here we go. Nemeth and Avalon, and the tag is made to big Preston Vance. Vance comes in. Executive Lariat. Yeah. Like getting hit by a telephone pole. Oh, swing and a miss, and Vance just sits out with that one. Swing and a miss on Serpentico. Serpentico tries to cause a Dora. Look at this. Oh, nice. Stunner into the German suplex. Love that combo. Love that combo. Great teamwork there by the Dark Order. We often talk about how effective they can be in almost any combination. Oh, Avalon, great save on Serpentico, though. Yeah, Tim was going for that big full Nelson, but look at that DDT by Nemeth. Nemeth hit that pendulum DDT. Serpentico with the cover. No! Oh, the meat man just laying out all the meat. On Silver pushing the pile, breaking up the pin. Sounded weird. <laughs> Tez, nothing ever sounds weird here on Dark. Oh, oh Serpentico oh. lands. Cannonball there by Evil Uno. And inside the ring. Uh oh. Uh oh. Serpentico, the spine on the pine. So intense. Ten is mess. Kind of twisted from screaming. Maniac, madman, large person. And now the meat man, John Silver, the legal man, oh, Serpentico hoisted it up. The pendulum bomb from the Dark Order. One, two, three. Here are your winners, Dark Order. Well, Peter Avalon tried to make the save, but he fell a little bit short. Well, a great win here tonight for the Dark Order to cap off. AEW Dark, and tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite live for the first time ever from the fabulous Kia Forum in Los Angeles, California, on TBS 8, 7 Central, tomorrow night for AEW Dynamite. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Is the fallout from Double or Nothing. I'm gonna hurt you. Oh! AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS.